Gorilla Geek going 10-8. So guys, uh, this video primarily is how to ground your antenna mast to earth ground, lightning protection. What you see here is, uh, it's called a one sh CAD weld one shot. CAD weld is, is, was the manufacturer that used to make this equipment. I don't know if they're still around. But it's kind of like scotch tape, you know, when you say scotch tape, you know exactly what you mean. And scotch is the name of the manufacturer, but, you know, if you say scotch tape, it's, it's, it's you know, a household item. Cad weld one shot is pretty much that same effect. So if I call it a cad weld uh, one shot, it's the uh, way of exothermic welding of ground wires to a grounding rod. Uh, right now the company that makes it now is called Erico and these two examples uh, they're both the same but uh, I got on eBay they're really cheap on eBay I don't know how much it cost on on the regular market but uh, this particular one for one shot it costed me eight dollars and I bought a lot of four so I was able to ground four grounding rods to their perspective wire and this is the part number for it. You'll see various part numbers for supposedly a one shot. And what that would mean is the size of cable that it, it will accept and also the size of the grounding rod because they're variable. Uh, you get from half inch to three quarters inch to five eighth inch and then the size of cable would be two gauge, four gauge or whatever. And this part number here would, would determine what that combination uh, this particular thing is is adapted to so what I'm saying is if if you guys want to go this route and, and the part numbers is 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 confusing it was confusing to me uh, you could go ahead and PM me and I'll help you decipher exactly what gauge wire and size ground rod you would need to to make your installation successful because if you get the wrong size grounding rod or the wrong size cable the molten metal would seep through the holes and and basically it'll it'll be done it, it will not work and as the name uh, suggests you only get one shot that's just a disclaimer right up front and uh, I really recommend people doing this route other than using the uh, grounding clamps because in my opinion I think using this method here would would just alleviate a whole lot of problems later on uh, it, it would make it one monolithic piece to the grounding rod and you don't have to go back once in a while to uh, apply preventive maintenance or to check it out or clean it up you pretty much do it once and you walk away you're done uh, not only that it'll transfer the maximum amount of current to ground because there, there's no, you know, point-to-point -point contact with, with the grounding rod, with the cable. So it'll be a much better uh, current flow. So with all that said, let's go to the actual uh, installation of this stuff and show you what I'm talking about. Alright, finally we're at the last stage of my installation here. And that is lightning protection. So that's what I'm doing today. Up here on the hill, I got uh, number four gauge wire here, copper, and I have a ground stake pounded at this location here. And I got a trench going yeah. over to the base of the tower or the mast here. Hey. And eventually, I'll hook it up to this area here. So, that there, that is at least eight feet away, a length of a grounding rod. And I have another one here going eight feet to this location here on the opposite direction. And I have another grounding rod right there. What I plan to do is uh, bury the cable and the grounding rod. So to prevent, uh, what do you call it, a uh, tripping hazard because I have the kids and dogs around here all the time. My area here, I get uh, lightning strikes quite often. Not near my place here, but close enough for comfort so I want to really protect the uh, tower there from lightning strikes or at least ground it out so it won't feed that electricity down into my house so I, that's why I have two grounding rods in parallel one on the opposite end over here and one down here I was gonna do a third one but I think that was enough this is the 
the mast itself and the pole that's buried on the, the ground to hold the uh, the main supporting pipe I think it's uh, maybe four feet down in the ground uh, stabilized with uh, some some concrete and that in itself will create a pretty good grounding platform but I wanted to take it a step further and do another grounding rod on that side there so if you look at it it's kind of like one grounding rod over here eight feet away this is acting like a grounding rod itself eight feet away and there's another grounding rod down at the other end there eight feet away as well so when the electricity uh, hits or lightning hits this pole here will take the brunt of the force and shunt it to ground so this area of soil here would create a, a dumping ground for that electricity but it'll, it will saturate so you got excess electricity you know it, go, it could go up to 40 kilowatts or more of, of uh, uh, lightning so some of that would be fed by cable over to this grounding rod here at least eight feet away uh, rule of thumb one grounding rod distance away from the last grounding rod so this real estate here would absorb the rest of the of the electricity hike uh, spike and it would it would saturate this piece of real estate here then on the opposite end here I got another ground rod here to uh, absorb the remaining electricity uh, and this piece of real estate around here would be saturated by the uh, lightning strike so it's kind of overkill uh, for regular homes in, in populated area. So this site here would take the brunt of the lightning strike if I ever get hit. Uh, and it would be dispersed within this piece of uh, real estate here. On bigger installations, you would have a grounding rod over here. And then eight feet away going that way, you stick in another grounding rod and pound it out down to the ground and that would sink even more electricity I mean absorb more of the electricity rather than the residual electricity going down your transmission line towards your house now this is an, an extreme case uh, like I said before my installation is not typical of a regular homeowner's installation normally for anybody else your tower would be right next to your house almost approximately next to your house and for one individual in particular that I'm directing this video towards uh, that's your case there you have the pole there and on this side the real estate around the pole there you have like a pea gravel uh, little uh, thing you got going on there and what you could do is just one little wire coming out to, to attach to the uh, pole set your ground wire, wire your ground rod right next to it pound it down to the ground dig a little hole and deep it in and punch it down even deeper underneath the the uh, surface of the uh, ground level so you could bury it if, if you take this route of s exothermic uh, uh, welding but it's it's no big deal for you to have just a little bit poking out of the ground and having a, a pipe clamp around it and attaching a wire to the ground rod that way and then uh, pipe clamp on the pole itself that that is perfectly acceptable I'm just going the extreme way the the industry standard way on my setup here just to show you know the, uh, what what the professionals do out in the field and in, in installation sites on um, brand new towers uh, they don't even bother with grounding rods really for commercial sites when they pour the concrete They just do it with rebar and pound the grounding sticks underneath and hook it up that way And so all you see is just the wire coming out of the surface of the ground All in one shot So here's my grounding rod and, and it's just below the surface of, of the uh, ground level of the of the uh, soil here so here the crucible is going on first and there's a little rubber grommet that'll fit perfectly around my 5 8 inch uh, grounding rod here and then the number uh, 4 gauge uh, hole here for the cable itself this is all clean and so is my wire here so here we go slip on over stick your wire through
Hey, I don't. So like I said before, this particular one was made to parallel another cable out to another grounding rod, but uh, it was cheap on eBay, so uh, I bought this one and I just used uh, extra length here to kind of plug up this hole here so the molten uh, copper will not spill out to the ground and be all wasted. So that's how it looks like on the inside. You got the ground wire going straight through, resting right on top of the grounding rod there. And now you put in your little, uh, looks like a shape charge uh, co forcing cone there. Place that down in the bottom. That will also prevent the powder, uh, the uh, accelerant from uh, uh, seeping into the bottom and, and wasting it. So now you take your charge here and fill up the crucible area here. putting your your cover on it then you 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 save yourself a little bit on top uh, on the uh, of uh, charge here on top so it'll ignite on the top there there you go and now it's ready for welding and they have little strikers that you could use to kind of like one of those big lighter striker things where you could set up a spark. Uh, but uh, I don't have that, so I'm going to go old school here and use a, uh, a rod here, spark rod. It's okay, she's all right. And use my uh, cold steel Spesnaz uh, survival shovel here to set it off. I know I got to go hardcore here, so let's see what happens. And it's that quick and you can see the molten the molten uh, result there in the fire pit the crucible so theoretically is welding or melting all that material together in one monolithic piece when this cools off we'll show you the end result oh by the way got to take some fire precautions here I got a bucket full of water here a uh, what do you call it fire extinguisher and I have a full size shovel too okay let's see what that looks like clean off some of the swag And there it is. This whole thing is just one piece right now. It's all bonded together in a molecular level. So conceivably, this is one piece of copper going from here all the way forward. So now, the one big advantage about this setup is I could bury this and forget it. If you use the clamping, the, the hose clamp, the uh, pipe clamp method, uh, you would have to come here periodically to uh, clean off the corrosion or whatever because it's not going to be a good bonded uh, connection especially if you bury it I mean it's not even recommended to bury a clamp pipe onto a ground rod with this case here you could all you could just uh, weld it together bury it and, and forget it it'll outlast your lifetime for sure so this is a good connection here and it's ready to and it's ready to uh, bury as you can see I just stubbed it over on this end so the molten copper will not pour out on this side. Usually you will get just a one, the one that doesn't have that. It will just have this uh, termination point, not this here. But that's pretty, pretty good uh, formed uh, and it's one piece. That sucker ain't coming off with nothing. <laughs> 